so in this video we're going to have a look at the volume of 3D shapes. So we're going to have a look at some prisms. Now we're going to have a look at lots of different types of prisms in this, but we're going to start with these sort of rectangular or square prisms, however, whichever kind of shape that we actually have here. So the majority of the time these are going to have rectangular cross sections in these starting ones. We're going to have a look at some triangular cross sections, and then also some cross sections that are in the shape of a trapezium as well. So when we start with this one, the big key thing to note is that bit of language that I've just used, and that is the cross section. So we're going to have a little look at at that so grab a piece of paper grab a pen make some notes and we're going to get started on this question now when it comes to a cuboid and we're working out the volume what a lot of people will do is they'll just multiply all the sides together and that is absolutely fine that will work but it doesn't really help with the understanding of how to move through all the different shapes so what's important to note is that when we work out the volume of a shape we work out the area of what's called the cross section and then we multiply it by the depth or however far that goes through the shape and in regards to a cuboid the cross section can actually be any of the faces. Now all that the cross section is, it's just one of the faces that goes or extends all the way through the shape. Now in regards to the cuboid here, as it's the one facing us, I'm going to look at this one as the cross section. And if you kind of imagine slicing it, if it was you know something that you were able to slice, down the middle that cross section would stay constant all the way through the shape here going in this direction, which in this case will be the depth. But as I said, when it comes to a cuboid, to be fair, you could actually look at any of the faces as the cross section. Take the right hand side, for example, this one here. We could actually slice it down that way, and that face would also go through the shape in this direction if I kind of try and draw that in. Okay? But as it stands, I'm just going to have a look at the front face there, and we're going to use that as the cross section. Now, as that is a square, Sometimes, most of the time, that's going to be a rectangle, but in this particular one here, they're both 20. To work out the area of that cross section right there, when it's a rectangle or a square, we just do the length times the width. So the first thing we work out is 20 times 20, which is 400. Obviously, that's an area there, so our units would be centimetres squared, but we're not going to worry about the units until the final step here when we work out the volume. Now the next part of that process is obviously to multiply that by the depth and in this case the depth how far it goes back this distance here is 40 centimetres. So all we're going to do to finish this off to get our volume is we're going to take the 400 the area of the cross section and multiply it by the depth which in this case is 40 and that gives us 16,000 and that will be centimetres cubed. Okay, not forgetting that when we have volume, our units there are going to be cubed. Or potentially when we're looking at liquids, we might have something like litres or millilitres. So that is how you work out the volume of a cuboid. Okay, and what we're going to have a look at now is something slightly harder, but involving cuboids where we have a bit of a compound shape. So let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so this shape here, we have a compound sort of shape here that's put, what that means is two shapes have almost been put together to form this new, and it kind of looks like a little bit of a stairs. Now what we can actually do is we can chop up the cross section into two different shapes, and if we just have a look at the cross section here, we have this L-shaped sort of, let's see how many sides it got, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it's a hexagon. So we've got like this L-shaped hexagon. Now there's two ways that we can split this up. We can either split it up going across here and make that little rectangle on the top and the larger rectangle on the bottom, or we could split it going down this way, and again, just having two rectangles there. Now it doesn't really matter which way we split it up, both will work as long as we can get the area of that cross section. And what can really help is obviously just drawing that as a 2D shape and just sort of visualizing it to the side to get the area. Okay, so I'm just gonna put all the lengths on. We've got five, we've got seven, we've got 11 down the bottom, and four on the right. Now obviously if we are gonna split it up going downwards, which I'll go for now, then we just need to find out some of the missing lengths. Now the rectangle on the left there we can work out. We've got five and seven as the lengths, but the one on the right here, we are missing this length just here. So we're gonna to need to work that one out. Now the length down the bottom is 11, and this little one at the top is five, so that must be a missing length of six. There we go, five and six add up to make 11. And now we can work out the area of those two shapes. The rectangle on the left, we've got five and we've got seven. So if we do five times seven, that gives us 35, so the area of that is 35. And the one on the right here, we now have our six, let's have a look, just going across, we've got six going across and four going down. So that's gonna be six times four, which is 24. So we have our two areas there. Obviously we want the combined area for this cross section here. So if we add those two together, we have 35 plus 24, and that gives us a total area of the cross section of 59. 
Okay. So if we get rid of that and just draw that onto our diagram here, we know that the area of that cross section is 59. Now again, just like before, once we've got the area of the cross section, which in this case is this L shape here, we're gonna multiply that by the depth. And in this case, the distance it goes back through the shape, this one here, is 20 centimeters. So all we're gonna do is multiply that by 20. And again, you can use a calculator for this. It might not be a calculator question, but we can use calculators when we're having a practice here. So 59 times 20, the two times 59 is 118. Add on the zero, that is 1,180. And again, not forgetting your units, so important that, centimeters cubed. Always just have a look in the question, identify what those units are, and in this case it was centimeters. So our volume there is gonna be in centimeter cubed, okay? Right, so that is how we're gonna tackle these first few questions. You're gonna have a go at one very similar to this one here where we have this sort of L-shaped prism. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so the question I want you to have a go at is very similar to the one we've just gone over. So again, you need to find the area of that L-shaped cross section and then multiply the depth to get the volume. But pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for the L shape here, doesn't matter which way you've split it, hopefully we'll get the same area. I'm gonna split it down again like I did last time. So to get the area of this shape here on the left, we have a rectangle, so we need to do four times seven. And again, just identifying those two lengths there, four and seven. So four times seven is 28. Obviously that's centimeter squared, but again, I'm gonna leave the units until the very end. Now along the bottom we have a length of 9, so to get the length of this rectangle just here, I need to just have a little think about what the other length along the top is just there, which is 4. So the length along there is going to be 5, and that makes a combined length of 9, like the bottom. And now we can work out the area of the shape on the right, this one just here. So we can do 2 times 5 for that one, so 2 times 5 gives us an area of 10. And again we can combine those together to get the total area of the cross section. So 28 plus the 10 gives us a combined area there of 38. Now we need to identify the depth of the shape, and again in this case it's going along this way, and that is a length of 10. So to get our volume, we'll take the area of the cross section, which we've identified down here as being 38, and we'll do 38 multiplied by the 10, and that gives us a total volume there of 380, and again units, centimeters, cubed. And there we go, there's our final volume for that question. Right, okay, so moving on to our next bit that we're going to have a look at, we're going to have a look at triangular prisms. So let's have a look at one of those. Okay, so we have a triangular prism here. Now again, we're just going to identify the cross section, and in this case, the cross section is that triangle that we can see sitting on the front just there, and it's a right angle triangle, so we should be able to work out the area of that nice and easily. Now obviously not forgetting your formula for the area of a triangle, that is half base times height, or you can do base times height and divide your answer by two. Up to you how you do it, but we need to identify the pieces that we're going to have a look at here. Now for the triangle, we have been given a length here that we don't actually really need, and that's this length just here, the length of the hypotenuse of that right angled triangle. Now in order to work out the area of that triangle, we don't actually need that length there because it's the slanted length. We want the height being the perpendicular length to the base. So if we take 15 as the base and 8 as the height, then we can just use those two lengths. We don't actually need that 17 at all to work out the area of the triangle. So working out the area of the cross section for this one, we'll do 8 times 15, and then we're going to halve our answer. So 8 times 15 is 120, and half of that, so 120 divided by 2, gives us an area of 60. So the area of the cross section in this case is 60. The rest of the process is pretty much exactly the same. All we're going to do is multiply that by the depth that that cross section goes through the shape, which again in this case is 10 centimetres. So we can take our 60, multiply it by the 10 centimetres, and it gives us a volume in this case of 600, and again it's centimetres, so centimetre cubed, and there's our volume for a triangular prism. So as you can see, once we've learnt obviously working out the volume just by finding the cross section, it relays very nicely into any prism here, and you can see it's pretty much exactly the same here with our triangular prism. All you need to do is you need to just make sure, obviously, you, you know, you clued up on all your area formulas. So in this case, half base times height or base times height and divided by two, whichever one you prefer there. But there we go, that's how we work out the volume of a triangular prism, and here's one for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your question to have a go at. Again, very similar to the last one. There is one length there that you're not going to need, but I want you to work out the volume of this triangular prism. 
Obviously just making sure that you get the area of the cross section and then multiplying it by the depth again. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for this one here then, we have a base of three and we have a height of four. Again, we don't need actually need that five there, length of the hypotenuse for that right angle triangle. So in order to get the area of this triangle here, we'll do three times four, which gets us an area of 12, and then not forgetting to halve that. So 12 divided by two gives us an area of six. Now we've got the area of the cross section. Again, we just need to identify how far it goes through. In this case, that's the seven. So it goes through seven centimeters. So to finish this off, the area of the cross section multiplied by the depth, six times seven is 42. And again, the units is centimeters, so centimeters cubed. And there's our final answer, 42 centimeters cubed. Right, there we go. So that's how you work out the um, volume of a triangular prism. Now we're gonna have a look at something slightly different to finish this off. Okay, so for this one, we've got a slightly different type of prism. And in this case, you would be given a little bit more information here, but it would tell you the shape of this cross section just here. Now you'll see that on the one that you practice, but for the purpose of practice, I've minimized the amount of information here. But that cross section there is a trapezium. So when we're working out this one here, we need to get the area of a trapezium. So you need to know the formula for that as well. Now with the area of a trapezium, I have a little formula that we have is A plus B, which is the two parallel sides. We need to halve, the sum of those and then multiply it by the height. And again, this could be written in different ways. We can have half brackets A plus B times H as well. So it doesn't matter which way you use the formula. Again, I'm just gonna use it in this way where we divide by two first. So if we look at the two parallel sides, in this case, that's the six and it's the eight. In order to get the area of the trapezium, we first add those together. So six plus eight, we're gonna divide that answer by two and we're gonna multiply it by the height between them, and that's the perpendicular height. And in this case, it gives us the perpendicular height there, it's five. So we're gonna multiply our answer to that by five, and that's gonna give us the area of the trapezium. So working this out then, six plus eight is 14. So we have 14 on the top divided by two, and that is seven. So seven times five, so our area of that trapezium is 35, obviously centimeter squared there, but we're gonna work out the volume. So obviously now we've got the area of the cross section, how far does it go back through the shape? And we have a distance of 20 centimeters there. So to finish this off, we take the area of our cross section again, 35, we multiply it by the 20. Two times 35 is 70, add on the zero, and we get 700 centimeter cubed as our final answer. So again, a lot of similarity between all of these. Again, all we did was work out the area of the cross section and then multiply it by the depth. As you can see, we've got a different shape again. So we've had the rectangles and the squares, we've had the triangles, and now we're finishing off here on a trapezium. So I've got one question for you to practice. So again, obviously you need to make sure that you have this formula here, a plus b over two multiplied by the height where a and b are the two parallel sides. And then you should be able to tackle this final question. So let's have a look at it now. Okay, so for your last question here, it says a skip is in the shape of a prism, telling us it's a prism, meaning it has a constant cross section. And this is work out the volume of the prism. Now, if you have a look at this one, which again, I'm gonna get you to have a go at, our cross section in this case, again, is a trapezium. And we know that because we have these right angles indicated there on the right at the top and the bottom, meaning that these two lengths here that we have are parallel. Now, in order to work out this one, you're gonna use the same formula as we did before, but you have got some decimals involved. So I would recommend that you use a calculator for this one, although it can be done without a calculator. So for our final question here, use a calculator, pause the video, have a go at this one, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for this one then, our parallel sides, in this case are decimals, we've got the 2.3 on the top, and we have the 1.7 on the bottom. Now, if we add those two together, being our A and B, we get 2.3, plus 1.7, which does actually just add up to four. So when we halve that, we're gonna get an answer of two, and we're gonna multiply that by the height, which in this case is 1.3. So 2.3 plus 1.7 is four, divided by two is two, and times that by 1.3. So if we double 1.3, we get 2.6. So the area this time of our cross section is 2.6. Then, just like before, we're gonna multiply that by the depth that it goes through. And in this case, that's 1.5. So in order to work this out, we need to do 2.6, the area of our cross section, and we're gonna multiply that by the 1.5. Now that's not too bad, we could do that without a calculator. 1.5 is a nice number to do without a calculator because it just adds an extra half on. But you can always do that on your calculator, but half of 2.6 we already know is 1.3. So if we add that on, 
that becomes 3.9. And again, obviously, you could obviously hop the decimals out, do 26 times 15 and hop them back in. But ultimately, we get an answer of 3.9. Now, in this case, and I hope you spotted it, our lengths this time, or our units, are in metres. So this time, our volume is going to be metres cubed. So again, do just make what do just watch out for that because you will have a lot of questions that come in centimetres and then all of a sudden there'll be a different unit involved. So always do make sure you check that. But there we go, there's our final answer, 3.9 metre cubed. Work out the volume of a prism where we have a trapezium as our cross section and there's our final answer. But there we go, there is working out the volume of 3D shapes and prisms, in, obviously in, for all these questions. I will link in the description the next video which is going to be on cylinders and then also there's going to be some work on spheres and cones and also frustums. They're all going to be in the description below so make sure you check them out. But again, if that was useful and helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe and I'll see you for the next one.